Two groups of stakeholders are locked in a fierce and heavily funded showdown over the future of public education in Massachusetts. At issue is whether to expand charter schools, which also means by how much and what safeguards there should be on funding for district public schools. Our guest is one of the opponents of charter expansion, the director of the Boston Education Justice Alliance, Marlena Rosa. Thank you very much for being with us, Marlena. Thank you for having me. Uh, I know we have, we have parents and other stakeholders on both sides of this issue, but I think there's more to this than just a few more charters. I mean, what do you see as the end game? Well, the end game could be, um, if folks don't stand up, that we lose our, our public education system. Um, the Boston Education Justice Alliance has, is a part of the Massachusetts Education Justice Alliance, and we're working to keep the cap on charter schools because we believe that that would create an inherently unequal education system. Why, why explain, why would there be inequality? Because I, I've seen all these reports in recent years around Boston that charter schools, they have mostly children of color, they come from disadvantaged households and they're doing well. And so where, where's the inequality? The inequality is, is just as you said, Boston Public Schools serve all students. Charter schools don't serve all students. They serve those that test well. They inherently don't serve ELL students and they don't serve that many special needs students or students with severe special needs. They're, and there are different levels of special needs and they serve those that um, are the most high functioning. You said inherently don't serve ELL. I have a feeling there are some ELL students or people who've maybe progressed a bit, but I guess you're saying they're not doing the job that ought to be done. Well, there's a way of categorizing students, uh, ELL students. There are some that are American born and speak very well, um, but their parents may have classified them in that category. And there are some students that uh, come to the United States and don't speak English at all. And those are the students that usually aren't accepted in well, the charter school. With your own children, you have experience on both sides here with a district public school and at least one charter school. So mm -hmm. how did that work out for you? Didn't work well for my daughter at all. And it didn't work well for her. And which school did she either. go to? She went to Roxbury Preparatory Charter School, what I found out was the worst school in the state of Massachusetts at, at the time for suspensions and expulsions. And they have a policy of shaming and blaming students um, and just kind of harassing parents until they decide that they want to leave. So instead of saying um, that they expel students, they just harass you until a parent withdraws or a student quits. Now, now it sounds like if a, if a school were that bad, why would anyone want to send their children there? Well, we, we know that the Boston Public Schools need some work. And so what the Boston Education Justice Alliance is doing right now, we're hoping to get more money into the BPS budget so that students are served better. So we know that the budget um, is not adequate to serve all students. So we're really working on that fight now. And that includes some of the charter schools that are, that are right now. We do not want the charter schools, any more charter schools in Massachusetts. But we know that there are some in-district charter schools. We want all students to be served equally. And that's what we're fighting for. Is there a middle ground in here somewhere? I, I'm thinking mainly the position taken by, by Mayor Walsh. He's in favor of some kind of a gradual expansion of charter schools, but he also wants to make sure there's more money from the state for Boston in the public school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There can be no compromise until all charter schools serve all children. That's the bottom line. We want Boston public schools are required to serve everyone and charter schools that are publicly funded with our tax dollars should serve all of our children. You mentioned uh, the discipline strategy at the school that your daughter attended. Uh, uh, is this just one school we're talking about, or is there something that needs to be done systematically about multiple schools? Well, charter schools can discipline in any way that they see fit, and often um, that doesn't work for children's, children of color, um, children who have experienced some type of emotional stress. There was... There's a charter school in Dorchester that is being closed that serves many of our children with PTSD or social emotional problems. And that is a charter school that, that's being closed. So, you know, we want all schools to serve all children. What about some of the in-district charters? There's also another school in Dorchester. It's not controlled by the Boston School Department at this point because the state took it over in a kind of underperformance. Uh, I understand a lot of suspensions there, even going into preschool grades. 
Well, that's, that's one of the issues. Students are suspended and given demerits until they just kind of give up. It's a system of shaming a young person instead of helping them learn and grow. What should be the strategy for parents at this point? Ask questions. Ask questions about how your charter school or public school is governed. Make sure that you get on the parent boards. Make sure that you join the citywide parent council and come to a Beja meeting. And what do you do at the meetings? We talk strategy. We talk about what's happening in the schools. Uh, we talk to parents and provide resources if they're having an issue, either in um, an in-district school or a charter school. Um, we try to provide supports for parents and then help them mobilize around issues that affect all children. So right now it's the budget. Well, one issue I, I do see down the road for Boston, e even if you were to stop charter school expansion cold, is that uh, you, you might have more capacity in the district school buildings than we can fill with students. Uh, what should be done about that? In terms of having more well, capacity? Well, I, I guess, yeah, because I understand that there are thousands of seats, at least in terms of, of capacity here, that, that maybe we need to shrink so we don't have to pay for stuff that we're not using. I think we need to work on the budget and the schools and uh, fixing the schools, uh, making sure that the students have adequate teachers, before we even try to address that issue. We need to make the schools that we have work. We should mention if people want to get in touch and find out what's happening, uh, what's the best way to do that? Our website is bostonedjustice.org. Uh, you can go on to our website. Uh, we have a Facebook page, a Twitter page. Uh, there are many different social media ways to get a hold of us. You can call 617-708-4685 as well. Thank you very much for being with Thank us. Thank you. Marlena Rose from the Boston Education Justice Alliance. Thank you. So, I will tell you what's planned for this year's Puerto Rican Festival, but first, this message.